I guess the best thing I can say about Mr. Calloway is to tell you how I met him. We both met as we were forming the board associated with the DeKalb County of PTA's men's initiative. Our goal was to get 1,000 men to help do mentoring. What is ironic and positive about my relationship with him is that he's indeed turned in to be a mentor for me, as well as a mentor for the young men who are at this program today. My name is Sylvester Hopewell. I'm a member of the 100 Black Men of DeKalb County. I'm also the chairman of the Men's Initiative with the PTA with DeKalb County. Uh, Dr. Callaway is a member of our Men's Initiative with the PTA, and I've known him for at least the past three years. And he's a very uh, observant individual with regard to young people. He really loves uh, young people, and he wants them to be the best that they can be. Uh, I've watched him do, do various programs with uh, school, school children in DeKalb County. I've observed him as he helps them to look at themselves and think about the things that they're doing with, them, with their lives and help them think about what they can do to be more positive with regard to their lives and the lives of others that they interact with. My name is Dr. Andrew Griffin and I've had the pleasure of knowing Dr. Calloway for many years. It was so good for me to see his class and participate in his class this, uh, this morning. And the, the principles that I think he brings across are so crisp and right to the point. And I think what he does in involving the students as he asks and shares his 10 particular areas that he wants to talk about, and he talks about it in a way that engages them in using their real examples. So I think anybody who has the opportunity to hear him should really embrace him and really get them, uh, get him to in front of kids, particularly the kids to um, to share. Now that I'm thinking about it, not just the kids, but all those, also the instructors. It appears to me that his many years of um, of teaching, as well as being an administrator, would be very helpful for the teachers to recognize what he has to offer and what they do either to help kids or to hurt kids. Okay guys, the first number one is accept authority. Guys, this is what I need you to understand. I need you to understand that your teacher, your teacher is in charge of the classroom. It doesn't matter how old he or she is. It doesn't matter how she look, what she wear, how tall she is, where she come from. Nothing matters. She is in charge of the class. She tells you what to do. She tells you when to do it. And most times, she tells you how to do it. She is in charge of the class. And all you have to do is accept that and move on. Your teacher will never tell you something that's detrimental to your health. Your teacher will never tell you, go out there and jump off the building. Your teacher will never tell you to go stand in front of a bus. What the teacher tell you is very simple. Most of the time is turn around and do your work. Understand policies and procedure. Understand policies and procedure. Now, any of you guys uh, up with the NBA Finals, and you guys keeping up with the Finals, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow will be history in the NBA. They have four, at least four game sevens, which they've never had in the history of the NBA. But guess what? Zach Randolph from Memphis will not be playing. Somebody ask me why? Because he punched the player in the game the other night. Now, is punching allowed in the NBA? Per me? Why would someone at that level do something that's stupid? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You don't get mad and violate the rules. You don't get mad. The policies are put in place for a reason. The policies in this school were here before you were born. And they're going to be here long after you're gone. So when you walk in this school, the best thing you can do is say, what are the policies and procedures? And I will adhere to them. Why is that so hard to do? Why we can't follow the rules? 
And then we get upset when we get chastised. I was in Walmart the other day, and I, I shop at Walmart on a regular basis. The first three cashier, the first three cashier stands, it says, express lane, 20 items or less. You guys seen those? Mm -hmm. Gentleman walks in with a basket full of stuff, probably six to 75 items. Mm -hmm. So he gets in the line and says 20 items or less. And the young lady said, well, sir, this line is for 20 items or less. He said, I see the sign. She said, well, you need to go to the, they have to call the police to get this fool to move. The next one, guys, is disengage accusation. Now, this is the one I like here. This is the one I like. How many of you have ever been falsely accused? Raise your hands high. If you've ever been falsely accused, raise your hand. All right, put them down. Now, what do you normally do when you're falsely accused? Yes. You say you didn't do it. And the teacher said, well, I thought it was you. Then what? But you get in trouble because of what? You were good. Yes, sir. You keep arguing. He said it right there. You keep running your mouth. You keep running your mouth. Disengage accusation. That means when you're falsely accused, as a principal, every young man came to my office, came to me because he was falsely accused. The teacher said, stop talking. He said, I wasn't talking, bruh. So right then, you crossed the line. If a teacher falls and accuses you, you simply say, my bad, okay, and you move on. Who's in charge of the classroom? The Do you have much right in that classroom? No. Not a whole lot. Thank you. You got not a whole lot. Because the teacher's not doing anything to hurt you. As long as she or he doesn't put his hands on you, that's not, that's not going to hurt you. You're right. You got to stand up. And what normally happens when you stand up for your right? Sit up straight. What normally happens? Take your hand out for me. Why? And you do what? You cross the line. You own it. Why do you all do that? Why do you all do that? Permian. How do? But see, it's not it's not talking to you all kind of ways. The teacher only says, "Stop talking." I mean, how else could she have said, please, stop talking, please? Now, if you weren't talking, how do you respond to that? What do you say? That's all you got to say. That's all you got to say. But is that what you do? No, because your peers are looking. The minute you said my fault, you get that little note that says, man, don't let her punk you. And all of a sudden, you act a fool. Why do we do that as young men? But the Trayvon Martin case, we all know about it. We all heard about it, right? Yeah. Let, let's us go back to that scene. Let's all of us in our minds go back to that scene. And from what I know, uh, Trayvon is walking down the street and he's confronted by this older gentleman. And the gentleman says something to him. And then what happened? Trayvon did what? Not necessarily, not first, but he said some what? He said some back. Now, supposing we go there and the guy says something to Trayvon, and Trayvon said, yes, sir, uh, you're right, I need to get on home. Will you be alive today? Perhaps. Perhaps. Expect tomorrow is number four. Over, over at Destiny, I had a young man who was, he was so intelligent, so intelligent, he, on, he only came to schools on the days that we gave tests. And he made straight A's. He would call up to the school and say, when are we having a test? And he would come to school and make straight A's. About 17 days before graduation, he got a job working with his uncle. Doing yard work. And he was making uh, $10 an hour. $10 an hour doing yard work. So he stopped coming to school. But how many days are we in school now? We only got 17 days left. So he stopped coming to school. He had passed all the, the state graduation tests. 
He had a 3.8 GPA. So I called him, I said, look, you only need to come to school 17 more days and you get a high school diploma. Not, not a high school attendance, a high school performance. You get a genuine high school diploma. He said, Mr. Callaway, I got to make my money today. I said, but what about tomorrow? He said, I got to make, he said, I got a baby on the way. I said, when is your baby due? He said, in July. <laughs> when is school out? May. He said, in July. I said, think about this. You're going to give this up? He said, Mr. Calvin, I got to make my money today. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I said, I will come and pick you up. Now, he lived way out of East Point. I said, I'll drive to East Point every morning and pick you up if you just come to school. So I drove to East Point two straight mornings and couldn't find you. <clears throat> Got back to school about 10 o'clock. Now I'm the principal of the school, and I'm out there trying to find a kid who need to be in school. I drove two days. So finally I get him on the phone, and I said, where were you? He said, Mr. Calvin, we had a yard to cut. I just want to tell you what. Just come to school. Just come to school, sign in, and leave. I will count you present. He said, well, I'll be there next week. We're down to like 13 days now. He said, I'll be there next week. Never showed up. Never showed up. 17 days to graduate. And he stops school 17 days before he graduates. The president says, we can do so much, but if you can't help yourself. Got 17 days ago so fast. So guess what? I, I don't do fast food. I'm, I'm kind of a health nut. I don't do fast food. But one day, I passed church's chicken, and the chicken was smelling real good. So I go through the drive through window. And guess who I see? He said, hey, Mr. Callaway. Now, I don't have any issue. I don't have any problem with, with working at churches. But that's a job for high school kids who are trying to make it. You can't do that. You can't sustain a family doing that unless you're the manager. But that's where he was. Had he graduated, there's no telling where he could have been. But he did not expect tomorrow. He didn't think tomorrow was coming. Had a young man who walked in every Monday, he got his allowance. He was getting $20 a week in middle school. So he walks up to the concession stand and buys $20 worth of Snicker bars. Snicker bars were a dollar piece. He bought 20 Snicker bars. Put them all in his backpack. I said, why are you spending all your money today? He said, because tomorrow may not get here. I said, but what if it does? What if it does? See, what you've got to understand is this. Tonight, a lot of people are going to die. That's just the way of the world. Thousands of people are going to die tonight. But more are going to live. All you guys are going to get up in the morning. Unless something drastic happens. Everybody sit up, son. So everybody sitting in this room is going to get up in the morning. You got to expect that. You got to expect that. And when you can get up in the morning, you make the best of it. Expect tomorrow. Listen, listen, listen to this. Listen to this. I'm not going to bring. I'm not going to bring God into this. But one of the greatest blessings you can have is by helping others. Mm -hmm. If you really, really want to be blessed, you help others. I don't care how lazy he is. If you can help him, then you help him. All right, here's the next one. Understand reality. Understanding reality. Shot fire, free fire. We're trying to get home. What is coming on? Uh, did you guys see the movie, the... Uh, what is that? Uh, Fruit Bell Station? You guys see that movie? Did you guys see that movie? No. The, the, the movie was, was based on a, true, on a true story. And see, once you take a look at that movie, you understand what you are worth in our society. It's, it's about a, a young, uneducated African American male who was gunned down, shot in the back when he was laying on the floor. Uh, on the ground, and he was not uh, guilty of anything. Let's go back to the Trayvon 
Martin situation. And I'm going to say this. I, I really like your dress, but I, I want to say this to you. Uh, three years ago, I had a DeKalb County police officer come to our school, and what he said was, was 85% of the kids they arrest will dress. And I think that's so unfair, because at the time, my son had dress. My son dressed hung the right here. But guess what? My boy went to Auburn University, an all-white university, and got a degree in early childhood education. But he was stopped so many times. He, he drives a black car hole, sitting on 24s, tinted windows, and dreads. So what does he look like? So every morning he was calling me. He said, Dad, I got stopped again. He said, Dad, Dad I, the, the police said that I, I rolled through a, a, a school zone when the school officer said, come on through. But I got stopped. He said, Dad, I believe they're picking on me because I have dreads. I said, you think? <laughs> I said, do you think? So finally he cut them off. He's an Ivy Leaguer now. Hadn't been stopped since he cut them off. So my point is this to you. What you need to do is become as articulate as you can become. And if you ever stopped, you need to let the police know how smart.